Hi, and welcome to the next chapter of Retail Doctor Group's Future of Retail podcast series. Thanks for listening as our CEO, Brian Walker, is joined by Managing Director of Lease Info, Simon Fontaine, to discuss the future of omnichannel retail and property assets. In this episode, Brian and Simon provide their expertise and hands-on experience as they discuss what the future has in store, what will the consumer experience look like, and where the value will be held in property assets. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy. Hi everyone, my name is Brian Walker, and welcome to Retail Doctor Group's podcast number two, Future of Retail. I've got the great pleasure today of talking with Simon Fontaine. Simon's the CEO of Lease Info and has been writing some very topical and incisive pieces around the future of shopping centres. Uh, and I've had the great pleasure also of knowing Simon for many years and working in the work that he does, which I'll let Simon introduce. But today we will discuss the future of shopping centres as part of the future of retail. So hi, Simon, and welcome. Hi, Brian. Thank you. And thank you very much for the opportunity. It's a great honour. Well, the work that you've been doing with us, even on the State of the Nation webinars, show a particularly good insight to shopping centres, which are key to Australian retail in particular, and increasingly to global retail. And perhaps just a quick intro of your background, Simon, and then we'll sort of move into some of the topics. Sure. Thanks, Brian. Well, I started Lease Info in 2005 after a corporate background in commercial real estate. I'm a qualified uh, specialist retail valuer, and I've always had a fascination with, with the sort of interchange between how landlords and tenants view retail real estate. And I set up uh, Lease Info to provide more transparency to the market about how rents and all things relating to leasing work. Because there's very little in the way of transparency prior to Lease Info. So we basically set up a, a reasonably large business on the back of being able to provide leases, which are in the public domain. And we've built a couple of other platforms as well. We've invested in AI to to read leases. And we've also invested in software to create lease management. And we still do a lot of consulting around the valuation of leases for for the market. So we're very much in touch with what's going on in in the market. Our speciality is really retail and uh, we've grown from there. Yeah, it's fantastic. And it's, you know, we talk about the transformation of retail and we talk about the trends around retail, including the integration of online to omnichannel, the growth of cities globally, the idea of this buying and shopping divide. And effectively, as we look today, an average of 12% of all retail goods that were once purchased in the physical sense, yeah. of course, are now in the digital sense or the online sense. What does this mean for the shopping centres? Well, what this what COVID has done is it's compressed seven years of change into six months. What was starting pre-COVID in March to be around 9% online, it's now gone up, as you say, to 12 and will probably hit 15, you know, in the next few years. So if you think about that, 15, that's almost one in six dollars of every retail dollar is being spent now online or in a digital sense. So what that has done for particularly for shopping centers is it's put them there with the shopping center model under the microscope, whether or not the model is actually fit for purpose anymore. And I guess, Simon, if I may, the model, of course, was predicated on the great railway and community sprawl of so many towns around the world. But if I talk about Australia for a moment, and this idea of a shop on every corner, this idea of a shopping center of some description, from community through to, uh, let's call it A-grade, super regional center. But it was always predicated on the physical visit. Now, shopping centers are starting to think about, well, what does it mean for us as designers, as investors, and as occupiers of shopping centers? What does the future look like? Well, to borrow a term from Shane, Sean Bonnet, who, who invested in Precision Group, he's coined the term fidgetal. 
which I'm going to say, I think it's, it's not, it's spelt P-H-Y-G-I-T-A-L. And it's a combination of physical and digital. And what physical and digital looks like is a combination of physical customer service experience, but delivering digitally. And he's, he's put his money where his mouth is, and he's, he's bought this company called Prezi, which is basically the, the delivery of gifts worldwide to uh, pre presumably to all his shopping center tenants, but also to the market. And what he's picking up on is this concept of a physical interaction with a digital delivery is going to become the new norm. And if, I guess one of the questions is, if shopping centres becomes too pure play digital, then shopping centres are in trouble because they're not digital businesses. They're primarily real estate businesses. That's their expertise. If they have to become pure play digital, well, then that is a, that's the realm of people who've got much more specialised skills than shopping centres. But I don't think so. I think Sean and the other groups are basically right on the money of a digital future. These assets... I've really got a smaller pie and that will continue going forward. What is the role of a landlord? One of the debating points has been around, should a landlord have access to online sales for the sake of the discussion going forward? Will it be a different type of revenue model for shopping centres as they go forward? Well, that's a very good question. The answer to that is primarily rents will always be their main income source of a landlord. Why? Because it's the return on capital invested. Landlords will not, by and large, um, adopt tenant or retail risk. Uh, why? Because the banks, the financiers, the investors don't want retail risk. They want property risk. But what so if they have no choice? And what if the market evolves to the point where that central tenant of being a landlord needs to evolve. So by that time, I'm thinking about uh, assets on charging for service and utilities and pay per visit and dry stores and you thinking about the distribution networks differently, changing that model. I see that as like extra income. So, you know, like for example, other shopping centers are already investing in uh, setting up key digital infrastructure for their tenants. You know, a good example of that is Panthera Group, which has invested in malls of the future and Rivershop. So Rivershop is basically an Uber Eats for their, their retail shopping centre community. And they have the physical resources and the technology and the drivers to be able to deliver that. And they will charge a fee for allowing the retailers to connect to that. that that'll be another source of income. But I still see for the foreseeable future that rent will be the primary driver of their income. However, in saying that, landlords will be paying, will must be paying much more attention to the retailer's occupancy costs like never before. So there'll be a much, much more convergence between what the sales are of the tenant and what the, the actual physical shop is worth. And as shopping centres to adapt to this new and future customer, start to think about, and they already are developing thoughts around non-rent paying space, let's call it that for the moment, the communal areas, entertainment areas, precincts for socialisation, excluding COVID. So we've got this force of how to use the space to bring the community in, but in a sort of paradoxical way, how to also maximise the economic return for that. And then yeah. how to integrate digital and online in that path to purchase, let's call it. So they've got these three pieces at play. Which are your thoughts there? Well, this is where shopping centres have to get back to, I call it back to the future. So they have to get back to the original purpose, which was a to be a town centre or a marketplace where people actually spend time they, they dwell and it, there's, a, there's a real sense of community and not just a fake one. There has to be a real sense of community, which 
includes, as you say, dedicating space to things like libraries, community centres, even, you know, for example, parks, open spaces, people where, that spend time dwelling. And that's part of it, but it's all, there's also a second key part of it, which is what COVID has facilitated, which is shopping centres have to go back to serving their, what I call the hyper-local community, right? They need to be really, people are going to be changing their habits and the hyper-local community is where shopping centres have basically a reason to exist because people are going to dwell there, there'll be uh, residential, there'll be mixed use, and there'll, there'll be a curated experience for those in that community. That's the real point of a shopping centre. And shopping centres have to get back to that. Otherwise, they're, they're really going to be in trouble. Because as we started, if it's just a pure play online with a bit of physical experience, they're going to lose at that. They have to be able to use their physical real estate, create the community, create the dwell time to, to get the foot traffic through, right? And that can only be done with creating a sense of place uh, within that hyper-local community. Yeah, no, I think that's right. I do wonder to myself, as we look at the increasing growth of, of social media, for example, and we fast forward into social media where we see, you know, the Facebooks and the Googles of this world with such great data reserves and banks and their ability to distribute traffic, for want of a better term, into more predictive natures. I wonder what the role of a shopping centre is then. We talked about shopping centres fundamentally being a physical asset today. But over time, could they be a more of a technology digital interface? Could they have those sort of elements to the mix? Oh, not could they, they will. So a good example of that, shopping centres are absolutely aware of how important collecting data is. They want to own that data. They want to own all the aspects of the connection between the consumer, the retailer and the physical real estate. And, they, and a good example of that is, again, Sean Bonnet investing in SkyFi. Mm. So SkyFi is basically using digital intercepts to pinpoint every, every location of every consumer that comes into their shopping centres, how long they dwell, where they spend, how long they spend looking at their ant trails. So they are absolutely invested 100% in that information and also using AI to mine that data to make much, much better decisions around everything from marketing, setting rent, uh, redevelopment opportunities, hot and cold, heat maps. So the shopping centres want to absolutely control that data and they, they're investing heavily into that digital area. And isn't that data ultimately, if we follow the Facebook and Google examples, a saleable asset and therefore a revenue stream in its own right? Privacy laws aside for one moment. But if we think about that and the digital interaction and we think about, well, okay, what is that growing in terms of how do you convert that data? Now, one initial conversion of that data, of course, is that it basically tells us everything we need to know about existing metrics, how many people peel off into what shop and so forth. But isn't the ultimate power behind that, the value of pathway mapping for customers and driving assets into a much greater technology advertising? It could be, it could be, it depends on, well, that's the SkyFi model. That's why they're listed on the stock market. Yeah. So that they, except that shopping centres uh, want to basically control that data because it's very sensitive. So uh, control is ultimately a contractual piece. It's a contractual piece, but it's also their point of difference. So if they don't have that, then they're going to basically lose because the tenants are also investing in their own analytics, and that's through third-party platforms like Kepler Analytics. Blix, there's a, there's a few players out there who are using mainly not as sophisticated technology as SkyFi, but they're using cameras, they're using Wi-Fi, and they're getting pretty good data, not as comprehensive, but they're getting very good ideas of footfall, of traffic interactions within the physical shop. That's true. But if I think about Tmall in China, Alibaba's 
complete AI centre. And it's predicated, I would argue, less on selling product in the classical model, much more on the value of data and the analytics and the journey of customer to Alibaba, if you like. So therefore, the asset becomes a technology-based enabler as we talk about the future. Well, I think that what I, what, one of the um, curious things that I think is going to happen, the shopping centres are going to become a real melting pot of different types of investors. You're already seeing it now. Like, for example, look at Homeco. Homeco is a joint venture between Spotless, which is a retailer, and between Chemist Warehouse, another retailer. And they basically bought the master's sites and they set up this amazing property trust backed by their own tenants. So tenants are becoming now serious players in landlords. I mean, Coles and Woolworths have always played both sides of the fence. But, you know, what will probably happen is that companies like big tech companies may well invest in shopping centres to, to get the delivery side of it. I mean, Sean Bonnet, he's investing in SkyFi, he's investing in digital platforms, same with Panthera Group and others. So you're going to see a melting pot of different types of investors. Uh, And that's why I think the shopping centre model is actually the future, despite what everybody says, I think the the shopping centre model is still looks bright to me. I see that it's a transition, but I still I just see that there's still a, a, a very good place for it because it's a melting pot of the physical, the digital delivery, and it's also a unique space in the community which is cannot be replicated if it's done right. You look at a, a shopping centre like uh, this is my absolute is East Village at Zetland, absolutely killing it. Why? Because it's got such a mix of really strong curated retailers, huge community out there, uh, residential, commercial, excellent attention to detail, brilliant retailers. And, you know, it is absolutely foolproof, that centre. So I I think that there's still a lot of excitement for for the industry. It's just a, a matter of there's going to be some serious change required. Yeah, and I think today, in in wrapping up, Simon, with great appreciation, we are certainly seeing a fast-forward evolution of the shopping centre sector, as we are retailers. And what I take from today's discussion is that the model that was the model, and still is as we speak today, must, by definition, transform, and transform quite dramatically. Absolutely. It will transform. Um, There'll be a few other, like, Look for, look for retailers and landlords investing heavily in virtual reality. So you're really starting to see augmented reality becoming almost mainstream. You go to a golf shop or a sports shop, you're basically running on a street in a VR. Yeah. Think about VR for travel. I mean, think about VR for shopping centres. Mm. So I think that the, the, the model is in a state of flux. But, and COVID has been the great uh, accelerator of change. The future for retail actually is, is at an inflection point. It will require a lot of capital to, to make changes, but ultimately I think that it's, it's for the best because the model was actually creaking beforehand as we know, but it's actually gonna be for the best. And the, the, the model, I think, will re, reinvigorate and it'll become, it'll become exciting again. It's so, very early days, but if we look at the growth of VR, virtual reality, a very low base. But what is interesting is that I don't physically need to be in a physical shopping centre to be in a shopping centre. Exactly. And so that's a really interesting piece of the mix as well. So. Yeah. I think, you know, this this idea of physical bricks and mortar and this great asset per se, landlords thinking about how they build their VR version of this, their AI version of this. Perhaps we might be coming to a Facebook centre one day, Simon. I wouldn't, I, I honestly think that's likely. I think that, you know, technology will play will invest in, in, uh, in centres. I definitely think that's a reality. 
Yeah, I do too. Uh, well, Simon, I'm grateful for today. Appreciate it with your insights. To our listeners, thank you very much for your time today. It's Brian Walker from Retail Doctor Group. And with great acknowledgement to Simon Fontaine of Lease Info. Thanks again, Simon. Thank you, Brian. For more information on how Retail Doctor Group can help improve your business fitness, please visit our website, retaildoctor.com.au. Email us at businessfitness at retaildoctor.com.au or follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter or Facebook. We look forward to hearing from you.